Welcome everyone, Costine here with my campaign guide playing as Balthazar Gelt on Legendary Difficulty in Total War Immortal Empires. All the things you need to know in order to play, play a campaign as him. Now the Empire has quite a few issues, the Imperial Authority system, a bug with Confederations currently in patch 2.2 with the Electro Count. Some people have uh, reported seeing it. I've seen it myself where the you would get to fealty level 10 and you won't be able to confederate. Uh, other people have been able to confederate just fine. It probably it may have to do with new campaigns as opposed to older ones. So you do have an army over here. You've got grand can uh, great cannons, mortars, outriders, crossbowmen, swordsmen, spearmen, uh, great swords as well as empire captain now out of the imperial legendary lords that start in the empire between gelt and carl france over here gelt is actually the stronger choice in essentially every way that matters yes carl france has his own benefits don't get me wrong though many of those benefits are tied to actually a skill uh, tree that you can get anyway if you confederate them so it's not really too significant you get 10 armor to all armies that is a fair amount of combat potential because imperial I units especially early on may not have a great deal of armor which will affect your ability in battle by a significant amount by having that extra armor. you also start in Solund you only have one minor enemy as opposed to an entire rebellion in the Reichland and one of the major benefits of playing Gelt as opposed to Karl Franz is that AI Karl Franz is much better than AI uh, Balthazar Gelt. Because Gelt is going to be very limited in his campaign. Karl Franz will not be. He'll deal with the Beastmen. He might even deal with Festus. Though the diplomatic limitations of the Imperial Authority system are going to be a problem. Now, I'm not using any mods for this particular video. But there are some that I would recommend you use for your campaign. I've named them in the description below. You can search them on the Steam Workshop, download them and use them. Those are the kind of mods I'd recommend. Warband recruitment mod in particular using the new recruitment system for, for or rather the upgrade system from the Warriors of Chaos is a very welcome addition. Especially. Anyway, you do have Fort Sol, you do have uh, the capital of Solent. You do have some savage orcs. You're not at war with them, but it would probably be for the best to eliminate them before they end up being a friend. Now, when it comes to your campaign plan, the first thing you're going to want to do is deal with the greenskins here. Actually, the first thing you're going to want to do is get some non-aggression agreements with the people who are willing uh, to give them before you fight the battle. Always, when you're starting a campaign, Go for diplomacy, see what options are available, get some money from the beginning. Now with that done, I am going to recruit a lord over here in the fort. The fort has its own recruitment slots. There are some things, however, to be mentioned when it comes to uh, when it comes to it. the arch lector is generally your best uh, hero, though. Here's the thing, DLC. Right? I wouldn't recommend playing the Empire right now in many ways, even with the DLC. There's a lot of issues, but without the DLC, really not recommended. There's only two DLC packs, but you're getting them, you're get, mainly getting the uh, Beast and the Hunter one, because the Beast and the Hunter one is going to give you archers. And archers are going to be fairly important for your early game armies. If you don't have that DLC, I would not recommend playing the Empire right now. Because without them, you can only recruit spearmen from settlements, and you basically need the barracks, and you need a tier 2 barracks for crossbows. You don't need the DLC for any late game potential, but for to manage the early game is pretty much a must have given things right now. Now, with the, with the situation here, I'm going to recruit two. Um, Archer units, set growth, just want the growth there, and then go fight the battles. Now, the reason I recruited here is to take advantage of those recruitment slots, but also to have an army within striking distance of those savage orcs. 
Now, I'm not going to research anything for the moment, because there is a potential to gain an ancillary as a scholar um, that gives you extra research. No. And you want to take out these green skins. The battle is fairly simple, the minor selling battle, battle, the battle here. These are fairly weak armies, so I'm not going to show that. I'll get into battles, battle tactics and all that. One of the things to know though about battle tactics is that as things currently stand in Warhammer 3, you are in a situation as a player, as an Imperial player, where because of the range problems that currently exist in the game, when range units just fly out not firing or doing anything in, a lot, in quite a few situations for both you and AI, the Empire is in a trouble spot. Because the Imperial Army is based around the idea of a, me a melee a front line that can hold, but doesn't really isn't really very effective in terms of its own combat potential, with the exception of great swords, right? Um, but not really effective. More like line holders and ranged units, artillery, cavalry. Cavalry isn't too great, except demi griffs really. Artillery is pretty decent. But yeah, you, you, there's some serious uh, issues with the Imperial roster because of the issues with the game as a whole. Potential. All right, so the battles were won. Now I'm going to level up Galt, get in uh, Root Marcher and Inspiring Presence. Root Marcher for the campaign movement range, Inspiring Presence for 75%, uh, 75 unit experience per turn. For the captain over here, you want to focus on his me melee skill line. Normally, I would say yes. get training for the extra experience. But at the moment, you really, really do want to get... Uh, you really want to get that extra combat ability. Now, research-wise with the Empire, there's a bunch of things. But the two main skill lines you should focus on. Don't worry about your army yet. Focus on either trade or industry or Imperial Colleges. My view is probably Imperial Colleges are better overall. But, the one, but you may want to get uh, the Hero Crew rank for Warrior Priests and Witch Doctors. But one of the things you absolutely do want, especially on high difficulty, is re the rebates. Now with that sorted out, we are going to get fields over here for the extra growth. We want that extra growth because we want to get uh, Faldorf to level 2 quickly so we can get the wine market over there. And I'm also going to set the council for both these. Legendary, very hard. That's all you need to know. We've gotten a decent amount of prestige and a decent amount of money right now. What orders? It is time. Now, I am going to recruit a bunch of melee units for him. Though maybe one archer unit as well, because he already has a decent number of melee uh, units. So. Maybe two archers even. Yeah. Though there's no point in going overboard and end the turn. Now, the goal, now to your west, you have Carrick Norn. The Carrick Norn province is largely empty, though um, two of the settlements are destroyed. Two are held by the dwarves, though they're going to be wiped out in quick short order by the wood elves. You could technically go for the southern Grey Mountains, but that would put you in contact with Athaloran. And there's reasons why you don't Signals want that. Will. Besides, you've got other issues. Yes. Now, as the first turn ends, <laughs> you may the initial armies of Carrick so, and yes. ha uh, Hockland <laughs> will be wiped out. Hockland will. will be wiped out in short order, and that's going to affect your Imperial authority. Now, yes. what's happened here is that the Savage Orc Move army has moved over right. there. This will always happen. Moving out. And you're going to need to deal with that situation. It's a fairly simple battle. It's not a powerful army. There are some boar boys, so you need to be careful as you are picking this fight. And you are going to force march Gelt into the fray here. So he's going to show up on the battlefield tart. Or I could not resolve it. But in a lot of ways, there is no value in doing that. Because... 
you will end up taking significantly more casualties than you should. Now, Savage Orcs are pretty nasty if they get in melee. However, they're also pretty easy to deal with in a lot of cases because they don't have armor. So any kind of ranged ability will wipe them out. The Boar Boys are actually the more dangerous units in this particular army. So you want to deal with them. They'll flank around uh, your army. Now since the enemy army is substantially stronger than my initial army over here, they will uh, probably charge towards me. Now I don't care about how many casualties I take in this second army. They're gonna show up on the field. The wooded area I'm going to show, uh, I'm going to deploy in, is going to cause its own series of issues. Line of sight issues, range unit issues, because the effectiveness of range units in a wood, as you might imagine, is not great. But since they've decided not to advance, that's actually great. Though it may have been helped by the fact that my guys were invisible. We're not being spotted. Sometimes, um, sometimes what I see happen in these kind of situations. Okay. Now, one of the things about Geld's army is these Outriders are great in this specific scenario. Because you can use them to do some damage and eventually lure the enemy into doing that. Yep. Awaiting orders! Ready for war! And so the AI Quick march! Quick march! will start advancing towards you. Great cannon! Moving! Black powder! Now as Geld, you do have access to some spells right yes, off the bat. Gonna move the great swords there. Now, one of the goals you should have in these kind of battles is to is to have your heroes take some of the damage or much of the damage. That's because your heroes are much more effective at taking the damage, and also ranged units will be far more likely to shoot. in a blob like that then they might be in some other situations so yeah, your heroes can really take the damage do a lot of damage without taking much in return. You can even flank the enemy if you're so inclined to do so. Just be mindful that your heroes and lords don't die, though. Like might be the risk here. The great swords will handle the cavalry decently well. Just gotta be careful about that that much lector. Spearman! Fallen 
Much of the enemy army has been broken, but not all of it. They keep ch uh, cycle charging, creating a lot of issues there. You wanna pr try and protect your great swords? Not like what I did there. Outriders back. The Outriders don't need to maintain their full combat effectiveness, by the way. Alright, they're gonna die. Or be forced off the field. Alright, they're finished. Or they should be finished. Now, one of the things to say about battles, there we go, is when you fight them manually, you actually get better post-battle reward option. So more money, more replenishment, all that kind of stuff. More prestige, maybe. But 2.2, they added... Uh, they add an icon to show you how much prestige, they added the information to show you how much prestige you're gaining from a battle. Prestige is the special imperial faction currency. Generally you want to get to about 3000, after that you can start spending it for some other things. So it took a decent amount of damage but did win. Might have been better. I live to serve the Emperor. I go where the wind shall jog off. To have to resolve in there. The Warrior of Sigma. By the way. Do not waste my well, might have been better from the perspective. Ready to serve. Uh, from the perspective yes. of get of just finishing them off in a single turn, because right now they they they've survived. One of the benefits to auto resolving. One of the benefits to auto resolving is that what will happen is when you auto resolve an open field battle, then entirety of the enemy army gets destroyed if you win it. If you fight them manually, a lot of units, a lot of enemy units, unless we're talking about Tomb Kings or Vampire Counts, may escape. Uh, may escape. In this case, they tried to use the Underweg, they got wiped out. I was not going to do that mistake. Though, I could have fought that manually and they would have died all the same. Alright. Now, Gelt is going Gelt and my journey begins and my other leader are going to move to the border here going to recruit more archers for Gelt going to demolish the barracks here I'll rebuild it in a minor settlement skill wise you want to start you want to get armor to reduce the damage he's going to take focus on his combat ability especially armor and melee defense he's not going to do a lot of damage in melee you want them to survive in melee. All right. That's your goal there. Yes. Now, fealty-wise, you do start with a fairly, uh, fairly high amount of fealty with, um, with Averheim. Now, one benefit, because I fought those two battles, by the I way, one particular benefit in letting the orcs escape, though, is I got to a thousand uh, prestige. There is a particular event that can pop up early on in an Imperial campaign where uh, you might get a choice to spend a thousand prestige for one imperial authority 
generally speaking, you may not get that option. Generally speaking. Now, here's an interesting uh, situation. The moot has been... The moot has been destroyed. I don't know by who, I don't know how. Generally, it can happen. And it will be reoccupied fairly, uh, fairly quickly. I also Welcome. do see in a lot Sigma. of campaigns... <laughs> yes. The destruction of ne needling. There. It is good to see fellow sons of because the there's a beastman tribe. All right. Yes. By the looks of it. Now over here, gonna get that weaving house. I am the supreme patriarch. Gonna get. Uh, gonna keep the growth there. The Empire. Very well. Now, I am moving through this territory without having military access. Diplomatic relations I have with these fellow, with these guys will be affected. True. I also don't care. Getting Fort Soul to level 2 can be a benefit early on in your campaign. Although you may want also want to delay it. Now, over here, I will delay it because I just don't have the money. But then again, do I need money for anything right now? No. Like this is gonna be two thousand. I'll have that. Let us begin. We are going to take the moot. Now, thing. Now these campaigns are dynamic. Some things do happen. Some things don't happen every time. This happening here means that I don't suffer diplomatic relations with Sterling for traversing the, their territory. My goal is to head over to take Sylvania. Combination of swordsmen, archers will do pretty decently well against the vampire count units. Now, however, Averheim has taken uh, the moot. What's going to happen in this situation? is an event like this will pop up. If you demand the return or lose fealty with the faction you're demanding it from, you'll gain fealty, but crucially, more importantly, we gain one Imperial authority. So I'm in the plus right now. I get that income benefit and fealty will start increasing. If you ever get that benefit, that situation early on in your campaign, you si who calls by sigma's will of course My take advantage of it. now right. interestingly enough festus has now wiped out hockland if you're playing an imperial campaign you need to be mindful true servant of sigma i will go of the empire as a whole it now what's the situation here yes you can wait until Vlad starts doing some damage. Like this is bizarre. It's turn five, and he hasn't. This may not happen. By this point, I do expect Vlad to take um, at least one element of Temple off. You can take advantage of this in multiple ways. If you can get to wipe out Vlad's army before it becomes too, before he becomes too high level and it becomes too strong, then that's as ideal as it's gonna get. Now over here, I'm gonna switch to control. I don't want the rebellion in my lands after all. I am the supreme patriarch. So end the turn. Next turn, we can take Templehof. Pretty easily too. All right, so Eshin has fallen to Vlad. He's got a mighty army. But thankfully, because of that, because of Vlad's action, he's likely wiped out a fairly substantial portion of Tempelhof's forces. Which means that they're going to be easy pickings. Or should be. It will be done. Now, we got lucky here. There is an event that pops up where you get the hero. Now, once that research is finished, get assembly lines. You want that in the industrial economic benefit. 
Now, there's a few things to be said here. I could declare war right now and take Templehof. True enough. Moving out. Follow me. Absolutely true enough. I will ready. So, but instead, ah, I yes. will wait. Now, because if their armies were wiped, wiped out, I would certainly take yes, Templehof easily this turn. You have siege. You have cannons. The fact you start with cannons means you can burst down, bust down the wall towers. You can bust down walls. Um, but crucially, destroying the wall towers is the benefit you're looking for. Now let's see what they do. Get recruit the uh, recruiting surplus. It is an imp. You summon me. Now I'll keep waiting here. The reason I'll keep waiting, one, I can get this warrior priest. There is no reason to rush this. Yes. Absolutely none. Awaiting orders. Sometimes a slower approach actually pays off better. Though of course, this isn't an ideal situation. The reason it's not an ideal situation is because I'm wasting time. That means Vlad is getting stronger. Why exactly Vlad's been so slow, I can only speculate on, really. All right. I'm more, the Heim has been taken over by those fellows. Now, ideally, Right, so Everheim is giving me another gift there. More time too. See what it pops up. Not nothing popped up. I am in ascent. That's I serve pretty bad. the Heldenhammer. Sigmarite Arch Lecter. Now, he's not going to have enough movement what points. Orders? Uh, he's not going to have enough movement points uh, to rush back to stop me. But I'm going to fight this. Chances are you might encounter an army of Templehof in this fort. Which means it's an open field battle. Which means tactics. Now, this is a decently powerful army, so you need to be a bit careful how you deal with that. Ready. You don't want Gelt's army to take any significant casualties here, by the way. Because if they do, uh, you are going to live to regret that. Because he's got another battle to fight after this. So just corner camp, deploy your guys here. Like, the goal here is to make the situation a bit frustrating for them. I do want them to charge, don't get me wrong on this. I can always retreat this army. Once Gelt's, uh, Gelt's forces arrived on the f uh, arrive on the field of battle. Orders. 
But as stated, it doesn't matter how many casualties this takes. This force takes. As long as the main army, in particular the uh, range line of the main army, is relatively unaffected. Or in general, if the main army is unaffected. You don't want them to take casualties. Or a rush. Rush the Outriders there. Great swords. Formation march at speed. Spearmen ready to fire. Your artillery. Of the heroes. Now, those Cryptars are going to be a bit of a concern. True. What, one of the things that isn't a concern are the zombies and skeletons. The Crypt Goals, Crypt Cars, etc. Yes. They are a concern. Because they can actually do some damage. Crossbowmen for the Emperor. Conditions acceptable. The Empire endures. No, 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 no. Yes! Great cannon! <laughs> that is a bit unfortunate. They got me good. Send them into the melee to get those spearmen out. Steady men. Moving now. Ah! Eager for battle. Take the ground. No lingering. Quick march. I don't have the energy, the mental yes. space to deal with that. They'll never move again. When the units are stacked like that, use the mortars and artillery. This is, by the way, why I buffed his melee uh, capabilities so much. Why I've been focusing on his melee capabilities, so that he would have... ...some survivability. Take the ground! Yes, General. Finding range, sir. Now the closer range units uh, are to their target, the more damage they'll do. Quick march to battle. All right, Kelt might flee the battle there. For the Emperor. Prepare for combat! Yes, sir, quickly! Yes, General! State troops ready! But since he has to flee through his what units... Charge! No lingering! He's actually Without not going to leave. Alright. Outriders! They're crumbling, Awaiting so the battle is over. Decisive victory. Now this army is untouched. 
So even if Tempelhof does attack me, I can uh, with their second army there. And once AI loses all settlements, that's one of the things they'll do. They'll look for a target and they'll attack it. Or one of the enemies there, one of the factions there, war with, and they'll attack it. I lost more men with Geld, sadly enough, but that's because the AI did decide to ignore my second arm, uh, second army. I would have actually liked for this army. to be the one taking more damage than Gild's army. But, crucially, I protected most of the range, just a bit of damage on the cannons. Okay, so we win a thousand um, in terms of money. Now, what's important Raise to note here... Sigma. Sigma. Gonna get uh, free swordsman. What's important me. to note here is that Gelt has leveled up, but he still has a bunch of movement points. I'm gonna utilize those movement points. Gonna get hard to hit for my hero. Gonna utilize the movement points attention. over there uh, to Let us begin. What? take Temple Half. Now it's tier two. It says crushing the feet. I call BS on that. And let me explain why. A lot of siege battles, a lot of siege maps have dead zones where you can approach the walls without the uh, wall towers being able to shoot at you. And the towers inside the settlements, they're not, they generally don't have the range to shoot outside of those walls. Depends on the settlement type. But the buildable towers um, don't typically have the necessary range to hit you. So there's a lot of room for you to deploy an army especially in uh, in imperial settlements this is if you look at the skirmish battle maps this is altdorf it's called altdorf so it's the altdorf layout it's got some fairly open zones it's one of the best maps for range units actually be it on attack and on defense many siege maps are actually horrible range units inside be it attack or defense All right. So what you do is you deploy. Well, my my preferred spot is here. Great cannon. But you deploy all your units yes, General. here. You can use your melee units to go past the gate, draw the enemy defenders. That's not the tower, by the way. And even if it was, the AI generally doesn't use it. So I can move my units fairly close to the walls, while my cannons start demolishing said walls. It's always great to be able to take down the walls of a, ci uh, of a city because it gives you multiple avenues of attack. Get the mortars even. Now one of the now some of the units that I want to focus on. Zombies and skeletal warriors are not really important. Crip golds, black knights, all that. Grave guard if they are in the garrison. The garrison of Sylvania itself. Drakenhof does have um, does have Grave Guard in it. By destroying the walls, you're also opening the line of sight for your ranged units to fire more cleanly and more effectively. But what if you don't win the battle here? Well, that depends on how much movement points you have left.
Okay, just stop shooting. What I want is those black knights to get closer. That's what I really want there. Take down the bats. 12 minutes, right? Now I want to keep my gray swords relatively healthy. get those black knights. Once those black knights are eliminated, if they are eliminated, the constant back and forth between you as the player and the AI is, is something of a major annoyance in Siege Pals, I'm not gonna lie. And sometimes the AI does decide to stop being moronic. No joke, the best strategy for the AI would actually be to charge for, uh, forth. But it's an uh, it's something the AI does. Uh, struggle to do. Far more often than you might think. Now with the situation, uh, with some of the stronger enemy units destroyed, I am free to move in my swordsman without too much fuss. I'll take some damage from the towers, but it's not really too big of an issue. That's it. Minimal losses, victory. waste my potential. You summon me. Now at this particular point, the Supreme Patriarch. Um, there are a number of things I can get. When they say decent melee combatant, they're kind of lying out of their ass. It's not just a decent melee combatant there almost on the same level as swordsman 
but I think I'm gonna get more archers. My economy is gonna slowly decline, decline considering all the units that I'm recruiting right here. Darkness comes. Now, one of the things I want to do is um, I may want to spend some Imperial for it to improve ready. my Are you? Let us begin. standing. How many points? If you can get the Grand Soul Fire for him, this is why our selectors are great because it would do a lot of damage in a fight, especially against the kind of units you're up against over here. It is a now, look at Templehof. It doesn't have the range to attack here. It, they might... There might be a bit of a penalty there. But even if they attack, they don't have necessarily the army. To take me out. And Vlad, crucially, is at war with Zufbar. Well, that's a mistake. I don't necessarily anticipate having a warrior priest this early in the campaign, by the way. Consider him an added bonus. You might get a witch hunter, you might get the captain. I was fortunate enough to get the warrior priest, but it's not something that's really going to factor in. In fact, I'm tempted to just not use him at all in the battles ahead, at least against Vlad for the purposes of this video. Kind of skews the results a bit, right? Now, as state the Temple Hop doesn't have the movement range. You can take advantage of the migration for extra, for some extra, um, Sigmarite uh, for some extra benefits there. You summon me. I serve Sigma. Now the game is telling me Is it time? Step to it. I go where I am needed. Shield of faith. It was telling me that I'd win. Praise be to Sigma. It is time. Should thine words displease me? Now, I have no idea how strong Zufbar is. I, am I have no strength. ability. Do not waste my potential. Very well, I'll move. All right. To see what I've got to deal with here. So this is a gamble. I could withdraw him. So, wait another turn. I'll do just that. See, the thing is, if Vlad is in his capital, he'll just come around with two armies and wipe, him, wipe me out. I obviously do not want to engage in that be, uh, with that. I am ready. Are you? Moving the warrior priest. So for whatever reason, he's not going to be able to join the army. I guess it's some behavior. If I'm here to serve, I live to serve the emperor. I will do anything for Sigma. Is it worth it? Well, I serve. I'm going to move him in there. Get him. Well, no. You want the safeguard. You want the extra armor. You've got a hard fight again Not ahead of you. Sigma heals us. So you're gonna need all the help that you can get. There's not enough money, sadly enough, here for that. I'm going to cancel this. What? Get more in hard to hit. Get inspiring presence for him. True servant of Sigma. Temple Huff is finally destroyed. Thine words dis Ready. Now 
Now I can see Zofbar, at least. Now I also can see that they haven't lost their army yet. That's one of the things you can look at, balance of power. If it's showing very little, it means Vlad has not fought the battle. His army, Vlad's army, is stronger than Zufbar. He, Vlad will almost certainly end up in a war with Zufbar in essentially every campaign. Be aware of that behavior. If you want the safe settlement to take, Eshin is probably your worst choice. Uh, Waldenhof is a much better choice than Seifert. Now, I wonder if confederations are going to be bugged here. I think it happens when two events are triggering at the same time. Or something along those lines. It's a bit of a bizarre one. Because the event... Because it's not like... Onwards. By the comet. Step to it. Let us forge our healing. All right. Your He's going to move there. Arch Lecter. Sigma's whip. Greetings on behalf of As the you say, sir. So, approach and make your As you say, sir. Aye. And what can the Yes. Trying to uh, make some good what? relations with yes. Karak Hearn because you want to avoid a war with them. Now I've gotten the, uh, the Grand Soul Fire with him. Get that to level 2. I'm still losing money, but once these weaving houses are done next turn, the economic issues will evaporate, uh, will be dealt with. What's happening here, by the way, is that um, it, it seems like the bug with Patch 2.0 with Confederations is like the Imperial events just aren't working uh, properly. Like they just stop working at one point in your campaign. Tools of judgment ready. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Very well. I do not bag you. Now, looking at Zufbar. To war! Hail to your emperor, manlings. Agreed. What? Welcome, my countrymen. Affirmative. The M. Um, surely an agreement. All right. Yes. Who called? Okay. Now. Uh, Research-wise, you might benefit from the rank for Warrior Priest, or you can go for the rank for Battle Wizards. And the capacity for Captains. I find the capacity for Captains to be a genuine benefit in a lot of situations, especially early on in your campaign. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Now, over here, I'm going to declare war. Will. And I'm going to fight this battle. But there's um but there's really nothing no, to this battle to be war. quite blunt about to be quite frank about it. It shall be done by the comet. I am tempted, yes I will do it. I am the Supreme Patriarch. A witch Looking hunter ahead. doesn't necessarily add as a huge amount. Then I'll have to decide if I want to take Eshin as well. I, I know Vlad is unlikely to be here. Uh, to be here, for instance. But he's quite likely over somewhere around here. Due to the war he's got with Zofbar. 
Now it's probably for the best to do it. So yeah, let me just get to that on my own. Okay, so the battle is fought. I might have benefited from attacking the army right outside the settlement so that they wouldn't run away, but they did. Either way, he's taken it. Now, most of the time, I would say, for the vast majority of situations in Lords, is don't invest any points past 7, because you generally wait until 20, and you, then you get the benefits. However, for Gelt, one, you need the power. Two, his special skill tree it just isn't really that great. Like Pistolier, Ammunition, and Missile Strength, you're not using really those units, you're not using Luminarchs, Hero Capacity, all that. Like, the only two skills that matter are these two, the Golden Face Mask. So yeah, you're better off just investing one point in extra Searing Doom. You can benefit from two if you so desire for base weapon damage and armor piercing weapon damage if you want it, metal shifting. He's level eight. Now for other skills, get more melee defense for your captain. For him, full on melee defense. Accusation is a powerful thing. Weapon strength is a powerful thing. Now here I don't have enough money for this. You generally want to get that as quickly as possible. Commandment wise, I've set control. I could set growth, but this is gonna get level uh, a higher level Champion pretty quickly. Taking it nice and slow when it comes to dealing with Vlad. Though the concern is that Zufbar might die if I'm not fast enough. So just gotta be aware of that. And deal with the situation. I am the supreme now the army there escaping means that they might take the settlement back here. Just something I have to be aware of. But Vlad is not going to... Like if you don't see him in Eshin, he's not... He, the only situation where he can be is in... Um, is in Drakenhof. If that. Interesting. Now, the Azak. Yeah. He's gonna be a nasty bastard. Over there. But worry about one world destroying issue at a time, I would argue. Personally. A quest has been issued, might. Now there's a gray mod and a number of gray mods that I would recommend using in the description of this video. You could wipe out the beastmen here, but that would weaken your army against the Vlad. You could wait until you deal with Vlad. Now we've got an army of nasty Skulker, Orc, or orc Boys, all Do that. That's a fairly nasty situation Purge to deal with. Heretics. Faith shields us! Wind of Shamon, I will. Cast evil out! Ready to serve! Sigmarite Arch Lecter! Yes, I am going to get two full stacks of troops. Now Vlad is in his city. Let's hope that he remains there. Genuinely, let us hope that he does actually stay there. Don't b bother with anything here for your warrior priest what? hero, if you do get one. Because it's not worth uh, worrying about. Now, the AI, one of the things to know about the AI behavior is the AI generally is not going to attack a settlement, um, a walled settlement. 
uh, unless they feel very, very confident. And even then, they're not necessarily going to... Very rarely do I see the AI using adva take a, taking advantage of their siege attacker trait. Most of the time, they like putting a settlement under actual siege. For at least a few turns. Now, I knew this was going to happen, but I don't have time to deal with this. We got other fish to fry. And we will fry them. Eshen might fall. Azak might get stronger. So on and so forth. Priority has to be dealing with Vlad. Azak's ruins my, ruined my party. Fair enough. Um... But this is an ideal situation. Because if you can get this kind of uh, situation occurring to, for you as a player, and this is why I waited. This is exactly why I waited. Now what's important to note here is Gelt has enough movement points, I think, for two, two attempts here. And even if he doesn't, by the way, one of the things you can do here is you transfer the cannon to him, right? You transfer the cannon to your second hero, he gets to do that second attempt. Because the cannon has a siege attacker. Now, I don't care what it says. Let's look at this. Same layout. You know what's going to happen. You know how it's going to happen. I'm going to do it. Like, it's the exact same principle. Though, to be fair, killing Vlad is going to be trickier. But basic point is... Like, here's the thing, though, to note. I can go in on one attempt here. Weaken this army significantly. And then kill... Uh, then auto-resolve it on the second one. And I think I'm gonna do potentially doing just that, right? Because killing Vlad or Isabella or all that it can be tricky. But as long as you get him stuck in in the settlement, you can weaken his army significantly. Uh, so, but I'll just go for it. Same principle as Templehof, though. Park your units outside. Use artillery range to do it. Take it out. If you fail on the first attempt, go for a second. If you fail on a second, go for a third. I, I think it is available. I'm not entirely certain. I, I know a second is available. I'm, at, I'm not entirely certain of a third. I don't think I'm going to need a third, though. All right, so I won the siege. It took me two goes. Um, the first one, I just did a regular battle, expended a lot of ammunition, did a significant amount of damage, wiped out most of their army. And then the second one, I just thought resolved it. Don't try and attack a settlement when it's simply just a hero there, because you might end up taking significant casualty as uh, casualties as a result of it. It is time, servant of the faith. So I've gotten Drakenhof. Vlad is effectively dead, though. Not quite. His main army might be destroyed, but it's not yet over. Either way, a lot of my guys have gotten higher ranks. Now, the key to victory in a situation like this, beyond cheesing it with archers on the walls, is having um, having an arch lector. If I'm not mistaken, that was added with the Volkmar DLC in Warhammer 1. But why is he key? Well, because he can gain Grand Soulfire fairly quickly. And that's a pretty essential ability in, those, in these kind of situations. Because he gives you a lot of combat potential. Especially when you're charging with units behind the gate uh, to attack a city. So, yeah. 
Uh, one thing to say here is you might want to set the battle time limit to longer than 20 minutes because you might run out of time before you've actually utilized your full combat potential. Another thing to mention when it comes to dealing with Vlad, you absolutely never want to face Vlad on an open field. Not because he's so strong that he'll kill your army, but he'll spook it. He'll cause them to flee in terror. And that will, as you might imagine, cause a large number of issues for you as a player. You want to get him when he's either weakened, so uh, so you can um, destroy him with relative ease, or more likely, you want to get him when he's in Drakenhof. Now, I now here I might lose Tempelhof. It might even be the best possible thing that could happen to me in this situation. If Azak does take Templehof. Ever vigilant. Another quest battle. Now, here. Do not waste my potential. One of the things I am going to do is uh, Arch Lecter. get some repairs, maybe. Let's take a look at the situation here. He's got a number of units, but it's not so high that he is... It, it's an insurmountable challenge. He does have that second army. I serve the Helden Hammer. But let's see what we got here. You summon me. Protector of the... <laughs> that would be enough. By Sigma. If I send more here, and in this situation, auto resolving it is the better play. Champion of the faith. Your word is my This own. army should not be able to attack instantly. Get more in pistol core. Ulrich's will! Zogoth! True servant of Sigma! Okay. Well, the sons of Sigmar have paid the price. Very well, I will do this. And I go back to Eshin to lock my wounds, so to speak. Now this is an expensive building, but it's worth quite a lot. It's not just simply the 300 income, though that's obviously pretty substantial. I am the supreme uh, it's the 300 income and the benefit to the province. 10% local province. I am Iron Fist. Yes. Approach and meet. Onward. Now I can engage in some electoral machinations over here. And I will. Now what I want to get here is Winds of Magic Reserve. Or, now. Yes. now the reason uh, it's worth out resolving the there is it just prevents them from being able to get away. I am ready. Are you? Start getting some growth. Ready. Yet got our fighter.
That's gonna cost a lot, so I want to cancel it there. Get this to level 2. And start getting a barracks, though that's probably a bit too much, isn't it? Rebellion might spark, but that's fine. The one thing to be said about Vlad is the bloody bastard is really hard to take in the sense or keep down uh, simply because he uh, he recovers from wounds very quickly Isabella will not but Vlad will now Isabella as far as I'm concerned is actually more dangerous than Vlad in a fight I'm gonna move my second army into Drakenhof or close enough the rebellion is not going, really going to be too big of an issue, but I do want to secure Waldenhof before Karakadrin decides to take it for themselves. Zofbar is going to keep Vlad from doing anything. The nation calls. So, you summon me. Sigma. Faith shields us. Another uh, manual battle. Well, let me just get to it. Alright, so the turn ended and my campaign isn't actually bugged. Anyway. Let's demand the return. Get more Imperial authority. By the, comet. the rebellion is crushed, and one of the things I shouldn't forget to do is make him an Sigmar's electric count. Will. Of uh, Sylvania. Although, I will want that letter for myself, <laughs> for Gelt, because he's just now. about to go fight Vlad. Welcome, my countrymen. Now, this is not a pleasant situation, I admit. Indeed. Your Welcome best bet here. Yes. When it comes to I am um right. to that, and it's quite Our likely that it will it. happen. <laughs> yes, come then. Affirmative. All right. Approach Just get more. Will. Who calls? Is to trade it for something else. Make a trade. Another thing to be mentioned here, by the way, is you can get the Knights of Moor, Imperial Knights. I live to serve the Emperor. Let us begin. Now, one thing you do want to start getting here is a blacksmith. The Empire. No. So you can recruit your better units. Oh, Isaac declared a, a war against me. Anyhow, once you wipe out Vlad's in a powerful army, his combat potential is going to be very strong. Old uh, still. Warrior of Sigma. Honor to your ancestors. Get an alliance with Zofbar. Go on then. And give him back Oak and Hammer. Ideally on the same turn. 
And that sets me up for a fairly strong campaign start. Sylvania is gone. Their territory belongs to me. I might be more it might be more beneficial there to get some growth. Now over here I do want the tap room. I want it. I am ready. Are you? I want the orb of sorcery. See Luminarchs um, work on very limited orbs of sorcery. There's only so many of them in the lore. The nation calls. For him, get Stalker. Combat potential. Then we'll deal with the beastman. Come then. Only Sigma's god Ulrich can judge it worthy or no. Well, this will uh, be unpleasant. Since it simply means I will not be able to... Well, until I can move to the Great Starland. You know what the worst part is? I don't have any good, great diplomatic relations. Like, any great diplomatic options, rather. Maybe if I use the political machinations to vastly improve my diplomatic standing with them, that they'll be willing to trade. Killing the beastmen would be a nice experience. But what do you do in this situation? Uh, what do you do now? Well, um, Welcome, is you can... One of the major benefits is that you can colonize... the mountains demand its return get more imperial authority you summon me maybe closing what the game and restarting it will help with uh, events not popping off what the oh well thank you my dude By the comet. Servant of the faith. In return, as gratitude, I will kill you. <laughs> Simple as that, right? Let us begin. No peace, just war. Purge the heretics. Gotrick and Felix has spawn have spawned as well. Though since I've got the WA declared on me. Do not waste my potential. I might want to deal with that particular problem. Greetings. You no doubt have a request. Ready? S yeah? Yes. Though All moving right. that far yes. north is not so. my idea of a good time. Well. Just worth saying. But you may want to do it all the same. Why? Drica. By Sigma's will. The Griffin would. That's a great item, by the way. Who calls? Uh, the Griffin would. Champion of the faith. Honored to serve is if you take it down it will give you a significant amount of money that you can then use for your settlements for now for him just pistol core sigmar's ward like for him especially sigmar's ward is going to be pretty important shield of faith it's a pretty good situation what i've got here but it's really to kill vlad it's really something that just essentially boils down to getting him in a vulnerable state now 
here's what you should do with electoral machinations. Use it to improve your relations with certain factions. That should be enough. The reason is fealty is affected by um, can be affected even further by high relations. You do start to pray a good amount of fealty with Everland. And because I've gained a lot over here. If you want to gain more uh, Imperial authority, your best bet is to abuse the demand uh, the return of a, a certain settlement to boost your imperial, imperial authority. If you demand the settlement back. Now, obviously it's not going to work in every situation. Ooh, this is going to get really interesting real quickly. I've seen Azak declare war on me um, multiple times. I could also go for Scrag, though of course that's going to create the vulnerability in, in my territory. Sartosa. But you can go for the entirety of Estalia, Tylea. Allow the expansion. And that will put me at 10. Your word is my command. Warrior of Sigma. It is time. And let's see if it uh, kicks march. off. I am ready. Are you? All right. With that research sorted out, time to start getting uh, the research percentage. I am not in. Aha! Greetings! Agreed! To the Empire! Zorika! What makes you think? Re yes! Who calls? Be at peace, Sigma's will! What? Try not get too Approach many. Approach to Sigma's will! So. Trade agreements. The em like Talabek, Lend, Reichland, and Nuln are your what? primary oh, targets. You Every other Electro Count Sigma's is. Will. A bit meaningless, uh, meaningless in one way or another. I am the supreme patriarch. So, greetings, manlings. Okay. Now, what I want to do is end the turn and see what's going to happen. Now, Isaac has twenty turns. It's going to be an interesting twenty turns, by the way over here I'll give some of that territory to the Mark why is he marching through my territory well it's what it is but I am curious to see if that confederation event will pop off. If it doesn't, it's a pretty nasty affair. Yes. Yes, that will do. Come then. Good. So... What? So events are puff popping off, but confederations are not. There's pros and cons with this. The con is pretty blindingly obvious. Praise be to Sigma. All right, let's so get some crossbows. I go where the winds howl. Now she's pretty weak. The garrison she has is not necessarily that strong. Either. Sigmarite Arch Lecter. Approach. Who It is the approach. What? 
Now, you don't want your... Um... I think it's probably... It might be because of one event per turn, but we'll see. Would make for an interesting... All right. That's a lot of men he's got. The thing is, this is an expected outcome. Scrag will declare war on you. And Everheim. Dealing with Azag and Scrag at the same time when Azag has got a full Wah. Well, try and avoid the full Wah if you can. You may not be able to. But anyway, this is that's the early game. Take the Griffin without uh, fight Azag. Most ideal scenario is to let him besiege a city. Indeed. Protector of the weak. Ready to serve. Protector of the weak. And what can the Dawid... Now, your territory here in Soland is actually relatively well defended against Crank. You may not realize it, but it actually is. Why? Wow, okay. Holy shit. My pokes are at your service. This shall. Hey, Catherine. Don't mind if I do. Let's see what we got here. By the comet, Ulrich's will. And yeah, sack it, then return it to the electric. I am the supreme patriarch. Wind of Shamon, I will. That will work. What does the... By Sigma's will, come in. Agreed? Right. Just doing a bit of imperial yeah. politicking. Welcome, friend. Yes. What? The iron hammer weighs heavy. If you insist, aye. But you can also return to Elector a settlement, even if it's been raised to the ground. True servant of Sigma. I will do anything for Sigma. Now, getting a bunch of pistoliers here may not necessarily seem Sigma like the best choice, but it's mobility, right? Now, there's a river here. There's a river here. The only way Scrag can advance effectively is directly. That's something you can use for your own benefit. So, who called? Now, over here. Yes, my lord. Yes, a sound plan. If you find the caravan like this. A lot of them may pass for Sylvania, because it is a route. This army I don't care about, True, truth be told. To the provinces! Sigma. I could use him. To take the one thing I may care about here is the artillery piece. The men to battle. To strengthen the empire. And maybe the pistol ears. But no. Just the mortars. The I guess that's his starting mortars as well. 
It is good to see fellow sons of the Empire this day. Alright, he would give me a lot for, for that. I don't know where Draka is. No. is concerning. All things concerned. Getting the Golden Hounds since they're pretty the useful. Empire. Awaiting orders. Gonna give uh Conrad Becker. I serve the held and Although he might be the better choice. True servant of Sigma. Moving out. They shouldn't be able to reach. No, they won't be able to reach me. Champion of the faith. Don't wanna. On it. By Sigma. And there are a bunch of things I can recruit here, but not this turn. A bunch of regiments of renown. Protector of the. I think I'm just gonna get the pistol ears right now. I am Iron Fist. Some call me a king. You are welcome here. That would cost me a lot. I have money. Greetings, manlings. Are you ready? Uh, sometimes it's worth paying a I'm lot of money. I squeen of just to get some uh, some nice benefits like that. Waste my potential. For him, deadly onslaught. Ready. Big Mars Ward. I am ready. Are you? Now Scrag is not my concern. Genuinely, I all like he's only got one the right path. He cannot use the underway, and he's pissed Come off enough then, people. <laughs> <laughs> to <laughs> bury a mountain, me, so to speak. Men of the Empire, in finding death in glo So they'll want him dead. Okay. I'll stabilize the situation and then I'll talk about your... Like, your mid-game plan, or once you deal with Sylvania, can try and contain Azag in some way, shape, or form. Though, if you remove the issue of Vlad, will you join me? And you take out some of Azag's army, like like I've done there, will then a lot me? of the pressure on uh, Ungrim will actually be removed. Stop right off. Okay, in the mid game, once you've secured Sylvania, once you've dealt with Azag. Once you've uh, secured your borders against Scrank, who is going to come for you, uh, you, it's probably best to go deal with Festus. If you're playing Carl Franz, obviously you want to deal with Festus fairly early on. His fortress is an absolute nightmare. The way you deal with that is you bring enough troops to want to resolve it, or uh, you get uh, the other electors to help you out, or you just have a powerful enough army and you've caught their armies out of the fortress. Uh, to take it out. What happened here actually is that they had one hero, one lord outside of the fortress, so I didn't even have to fight for it. You don't necessarily have the best siege capability, and your good armies are um, like your early game armies are great for siege archers, crossbowmen, because you can just kill units uh, off the walls or behind the walls. But your mid game armies are not cavalry, handgunners, etc. They're not so great for siege. So you might uh, rely on that little trick or set your army in ambush stance outside their, their fortress when they start moving out of it. Uh, just kill them, uh, kill them. Now, when it comes to Geld's army, um, 
Try not to have as many regiments run on here uh, as I did. I, I got all these regiments because I was dealing specifically with Festus, but I'm tempted to disband some of them, just get handgunners, crossbows, uh, cavalry for him, like just disband them, spread the love. Keep, keep the silver bullets, but that's about it. Or, well, keep the silver bullets, hellstorms, and hammer of the witchers. Though maybe get rid of those mortars since I don't need artillery there. Um, in terms of mid-game potential, you want to get the Shrine of Sigmar, you want to get the Barracks, you want to get the Wizard's Conclave. As Geld, you can recruit a ridiculous number of Wizards in your campaign. Like over here I can recruit 8, I've recruited 3, I've given uh, this army one of them. This army, one of them, Bright Wizard, so that, that one was a Shadow Wizard. Like Shadow, Bright... Life is actually quite effective, so I have, uh, or Jade Wizard as it's called, because uh, you can get some really nice spells through uh, his skill line. For instance, the Dwellers Below is a pretty powerful ability. But yeah, Life, Bright, Shadow, um, uh, they're all pretty good, uh, magical uh, skill lines. It's pretty quickly, it's uh, you can uh, get into a position to be able to recruit uh, three Imperial Captains very early on, along with two Warrior Priests. The Shrine of Sigmar, a single Shrine of Sigmar, like you will start with one capacity by default, right? And you'll get an extra capacity by getting the Shrine of Sigmar, so that's two. Um, Research-wise, obviously can, can help. But what you want, before I talk about research, what you want is uh, you want to make Southern Sylvania in particular with Castle Ranganov and all those lovely, lovely slots, the 10 slots that it has, you want to uh, make it your center of recruitment. It's got a strong garrison, a fairly, a very strong garrison, um, especially if allies put an outpost there, but even without that, it's got a fairly strong garrison. Obviously, you can buff that up even more. The gold mine makes it worth it. And you pretty much won't be able to recruit everything here. Uh, the one vulnerability is, of course, the blacksmith chain that you m may want to put on a minor settlement, though not necessarily so. And yeah, get um, mage recruitment. The Luminarch is useless. Let's be absolutely clear on this. It's not really that great. Um, Shrine of uh, Sigmar, obviously, pretty important to get the recruit rank uh, for warrior, priest, hero capacity um, as well. Though, honestly... Outside of the hero recruit rank, you can get Shrines of Sigmar in a minor settlement, as I'm doing here, because you're not really going to add... Like, you're going to need a lot of these uh, to be able to get a good amount of Warrior Priest. And you absolutely want to get Warrior Priest. But army composition-wise, what do you want? Ready well, until you get to Tier 4, like, you can get to Tier 3 re relatively reasonably. Like, at Tier 1, it's Archers. At Tier 2... It's um, a spearman with shields and crossbows. At tier 3, uh, greatswords, handgunners, mortars. That's what you want to get. Cavalry potentially, though uh, investing in the cavalry chain can be a bit of an issue. But Knights of the Blazing Sun, or just Imperial uh, Knights at tier 2, might be worth it. But honestly, I, I never recruit Imperial Knights. I, actually, I just flat out don't recruit Imperial Cavalry in general. Uh, partly because the, because the Imperial Knights don't, aren't too great. The Skirmisher Cavalry can do uh, can do some work. Like, Alverheim has one by default. Like, for instance, all my Cavalry recruitment uh, capa uh, capacity is over here. Um, if you can get Talibayim, if you can get Talibayim, and you can get the Headquarters over there, um, you may be able to recruit Knights of the Blazing Sun far cheaper. Though in this campaign, for instance, Alibiam was taken over by, by Festus, it was taken back by Sterland, and I forced them to return him. Um, so, uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun may be worth it. One or two Outrider units per arm might be worth it. Why is that? Well, as I've shown you in the battle... Uh, well, I haven't necessarily shown it actually in the battles very effectively, but one of the things is, like, if you are attacking an army that's on the defense and you want to position it in a really good way... Um, you can use Outriders to lure the enemy towards your army by doing some damage. They're not great units in combat potential, but they're great at luring the enemies into your kill, killing fields. 
But yeah, great swords, um, great swords, halberdiers. If you want some anti-cav options, though, once you get, once you start getting demigriffs, uh, get rid of the halberdiers. Like just replace the halberdiers with dem demigriffs. Like the demigriffs are gonna counter, uh, uh, counter that because the demigriffs. If we look, um, if we look over here, the demigriffs with uh, halberds are probably your better choice. Uh, when it comes to at least countering enemy ca uh, cavalry, though I wouldn't use ca uh, cavalry necessarily to counter uh, single entities uh, like giants and all that, but they can be great at countering. Like basically, the way um, these kind of cavalry units, the demigriffs having fewer models might be quite uh, decently effective at it, but really the what they're effective at beyond just being a really really good unit that's good against pretty much everything. What these units are great at is countering enemy cavalry. Like the anti-infantry, uh, the regular demigriff knights, yeah, they're good. But the demigriffs with halberds, they're probably the choice you want to go for at tier 4. Now, getting to tier 4 can be a bit of an issue, uh, or it can take you a bit of time. Well, if you don't build the growth buildings, which you may not necessarily have an incentive to do so, because even if you have the, the growth, like I have it here, you may not have the money. Having a lot of growth is pointless if you don't have the money to support uh, getting those structures. Or support the armies as well. But yeah, at tier 3, great swords, halberdiers, handgunners for open field battles, crossbowmen, and mortars, especially for sieges. Though it's best to try and avoid as many sieges as possible. They're not a great experience. Um, winning for attrition or winning by uh, with an ambush stance and creating a vulnerability or winning basically with auto resolve in the sieges is just Warrior generally your best bet as opposed to actually fighting a lot of sieges um, one of the things to be said is that if you could get enough imperial authority you might take Nuln and Nuln has some uh, some benefits well uh, Unit roster-wise, that's it. Great swords, handgunners, halberdiers, or spearmen with shields, crossbows, mortars. Cavalry, if you want it. Outriders for luring the enemy towards you, using regiments of renown. Now, in terms of what you're going to do on the campaign map, you will want to deal with Scrag, partly because he's going to declare war on you, um, and he's going to come for Averheim. Now, Averheim is fairly safe, as mentioned. Um, but the eastern border princes are not. The old Scrag, I actually killed Scrag here uh, myself. It may have taken two entire armies and fighting his armies one at a time, but I killed him. The ogres are not too great when it comes to the um, to a proper imperial army. Like if you're playing a Scrag, you'll decimate the empire because the empire doesn't like the AI empire doesn't have a great uh, unit selection. But if you're playing, uh, if you're playing the empire, yeah, you know he's gonna have large units. You know those units are gonna do very well in the charge. So spearmen with shields, eventually halberdiers if you want them, archers, crossbows, they'll do pretty well against them. Or you just bring two armies, two full stacks or one and a, uh, one and a half stacks, and you just auto resolve the battles. Scrag doesn't have a great economy. He doesn't have a, a lot of units. Even when played by the Legendary Eye, he's not going to have a lot for it. And he's likely going to end up in a war with Belagar. So what I did is I took out each of his armies. He had two full uh, stacks. I took each of them out individually because they were spread out. And then I marched here and took all this territory. And then I gave it to Belagar. I gave it to Belagar because, one of the, because you don't want to go start going too far down. Partly because the territory is unsuitable, and partly because you're going to encounter the same issue I did, which is Warzog is going to sh uh, show up with multiple doom stacks on your territory. And he is an absolute nightmare. But like Scrag, his units can be hard counter, especially by range, because Savage Orcs, which he relies on heavily, uh, Savage Orcs are fairly vulnerable to range fire. Like, and they're scarier in Dot Resolve, or um, or in what the game tell, tells you Dot Resolve uh, outcome will be, than in battles. Like every time I fought Savage Orcs in battles, um, because as Skaven or Empire, I've decimated them because they're incredibly vulnerable to range. If you get stuck in melee or in prolonged combat with them, yeah, that's gonna be a nasty, nasty affair. Um, but if you you, if you can decimate them on range, you can do so extremely easily, even though you don't have the best range in the game. So deal with Scrag, 
take the territory, give it to Belagar, make a deal with Belagar, and then maybe help Bel Belagar, because he's going to be uh, dealing with a lot of problems. Sartosa, Ikeclaw, and all that. Now, if I toggle the Fog of War here, what you may want to do, what you likely should do, is take out all of Estalia, Tylea, uh, and Tylea, and Skaven Blight, because it's great territory for you. The problem is, you may not be able to do it. You may not have the option. You can also, uh, you can also uh, start settling in the in uh, the desert as well. Scarbrand is certainly proving to be quite a menace. But of course, the and the problem is you're not really going to be able to focus on a southern campaign. At, even though that would be great, territory wise, resources wise, province wise. Um, even though that would be great, you're not going to be able to focus on that because you have to keep the empire together. Because if you lose too much imperial authority, you get the civil war and yeah, public order starts suffering, income starts suffering significantly. You need to keep the empire together. So try and split your attention. You certainly, like, this is the thing about conquering Sylvania and why you want to do it. It's about being able to get the resources necessary to uh, be able to split your attention. Like, I've got an entire army over here. Another one that lost a lot of men stopping at Ikikla, and now I'm rebuilding it. But lost a lot of men stopping Ikikla, who was marching on Karakagazor. Like, this army is marching here to deal with Sartosa. Hopefully, we'll be able to stop Sartosa. Yeah, it will be able to stop Sartosa, because Sartosa's units are... Like, Vampire Coast is very vulnerable to ranged. Um, and then I'll send the second army there. Like, of, like, if there's anything I would say is maybe avoid t uh, taking all of Tylea and maybe going for Estalia is the better option. Because if you go to for Tylea, you're just right next door for to Scarbrand, right? Maybe give that to Belagar. Belagar can be a great friend uh, to you, though the dwarves obviously have a lot of issues right now. And one of the problems for uh, for ra uh, with races being weak even in your hands is that they're also weak in the hands of the AI. So the dwarves right now do struggle greatly when played by the AI on pretty much every difficulty. And so they end up uh, being particularly weak. Now, that's the south. What about to the north? Well, if you can form a front line, though here I've got two armies of Skaven showing up. Because Clan Ferric has finally gotten around to actually sending armies against me. It's been only 30 turns or 20 turns, however long it's been since they declared war on me. Uh, they finally got around to sending an army. I'm sending an army to counter them. But try not to advance over here in the Dark Lands because it's not great territory. Just do the minimal amount of effort. Maybe setting up a garrison building here uh, would be enough to stop the vast majority of threats or keeping a small army there. Those supply lines are going to hurt. To the north, um, yeah, Geld should deal with the northern problem. Partly because Festus can be an absolute nightmare. Maybe you support him with another army. But you don't want to expand to the north. Your expansion, like, this is the thing. You want to kill Festus, but then you want to just shove off. Like, let Karl France, let the, the Electric Counts, let Bretonia deal with that. No dealing with Norska is a waste of time. Let Kislev hold the line while you expand to the south. Like, that's the thing. You need to hold the line in the north, because if you don't, like, if you don't support the north in any way, Kislev and the Empire, like, they're just going to be overwhelmed by the combination of Norska, uh, be it the World Walkers, Trog, Az and the Warriors of Chaos, Az Azazel in particular. Now, is the the unholy combination of Azazel, uh, Trog, and uh, and Wolfric is an absolute nightmare. Like, look at this campaign. Uh, Castalton is basically down to Erengrad. Catherine is doing better. She's got both Prague and Kislev, and because I took out Draka and Azak, uh, she's in a much better situation. Excellent. Actually, just to mention something about Azak and Draka. Draka may very well declare war on Azak, and the best thing that could happen, that didn't happen in the situation, but the best thing that could happen for you as a player is they, and this is something that applies to Kislev as well, is they fight each other and annihilate each other's armies or weaken each other's army and you just swoop in next to the Griffinwood, take it out, take out Draka's recruitment capability, because what you need to know about Wood Elves, although Draka has the ability to recruit units even without the Griffinwood, she loses the griffin when she can't get Trikin. Trick, Trikin are the big issue. Don't just show up and fight Draka's army directly. Actually, don't fight her directly at all on the battlefield, because you're just going to lose. 
even if you like you can be in a lot of situations where that resolve like this is where things start breaking down a bit that resolve generally is not going to benefit you but it may benefit you against Rika or even the vampire counts on an open field battle like against Vlad you fight him on an open field battle you've got a good out resolve take that out resolve even if you lose a lot of men because if you start fighting him on an open field if you fight Draka on an open field here's what's going to happen they're going to charge your army directly and they're going to route your entire army because of the many leadership debuffs that they have so you want to avoid that kind of uh, situation they're too uh, like this is where why they're so strong by the way because even if the resolve doesn't necessarily affect if they start fighting a battle, they, it's very hard to lose a battle as the Wood Elves in particular. Or the Vampire Counts, if you fight them manually. It might not be the most fun experience, but damn, you can get a lot. Like, units of Treekin, just really hard to kill, high uh, durability. You basically want to create a situation where the only time where you're fighting Draka or Vlad manually is uh, like I encountered here in Drakenhof, right? And I fought them manually, um, but that's because, yeah, the AI just sits behind the t its walls, does absolutely nothing, and you just kill them. And even if you don't win the first time around, you just show up a second time, a third time, it doesn't matter, or keep the siege. Champion um, of the faith. Or keep the siege if you weaken them significantly enough. But yeah, once... Um, like, once you stabilize the situation right here, you should start being able to confederate the electric counts. Here it's bugged out. Maybe if I close the game, I don't know. Uh, may, I don't know. Sometimes it starts working again. Like, I think, like, in this campaign, it stopped working at a point. Then Averheim surprisingly gave me a confederation option. So it started working again. But now it stopped working again, the confederation system. It's, it's a term miss, right? It's hit or miss. But hopefully they will fix that with a bug fix. We will see. Ready. But, yeah. You just want to get armies. Like, start with swordsmen and uh, swordsmen and archers. Transition into crossbow spearmen with shields. I obviously, don't just throw away your units. One consideration I would give you, though. Out of all the mods that I would recommend. Is the warband upgrade system would, it would be... A huge quality of life change for you if you're playing the Empire. Though it does have its limitations, like cavalry limitations, artillery uh, limitations in particular, because you need both artillery and cavalry. But yeah, just being able to take units, convert them um, into the better options is uh, is a great uh, feature. When it comes to dealing with uh, with maintaining imperial authority. Just always demand the territory to be returned unless you're going to spark a civil war, unless you're going to reduce the fealty to a one or zero. Always, um, or if you're going to, yeah, if you're going to reduce it to, from two to one, or uh, just don't do it. But outside of that kind of context, always demand the territory to return and you'll get imperial authority. Do whatever is necessary to uh, get imperial authority. Uh, if an electric count's been wiped out, and some of them will. Ostermark is in trouble spot. Hawkland will be wiped out. Like, actually, they've been wiped out multiple times. Um, Imperial Authority is also tied to the capitals of factions. So, always return the capitals to the electric counts because it's going to give you an Imperial Authority. And you should be able to be in the plus zone. And if you're in the plus zone, one of the things I could do here is, like, I could declare war against Ostermark, like, cancel all these agreements. That's one thing to, worth saying. You want the territory of the Empire under your control. If you, you know, if I could get the two confederations that I should get here and the third soon enough with uh, Talibayim, like maybe I wouldn't want to confederate uh, Hawkland over here, but I could, I Welcome, uh, might want to confederate Middleland. Or maybe not, right? Because they are exposed to a lot of shit. Maybe I wouldn't want to confederate either of them. Maybe what I'd really want to do is confederate Sterland. But here, the thing, here's the thing, if you get fealty to tending and turn down a confederation, that's also good because you get imperial authority for that. So for in, in with extra imperial authority, like for instance, I, I could cancel my agreements with Starland and just conquer them outright. Or conquer the Ostermark, more likely conquer Null. null. Don't conquer, don't try and conquer the Reichland. That's a stupid idea. Like Karl Franz is going to be all very, very strong and you won't want him to be very strong. 
like there are some factions which are not worth existing as far as i'm seeing as, uh, as i see it on the imperial campaign like Nuln, um ostermark pre-worthless osland pre-worthless though you don't generally want to conquer them outright um Though, and it's also worth saying that sometimes you don't want to bring an Electrocon back to life. Like Ostland over here, look at their situation. They've only got one territory. They're incredibly vulnerable. Wolfric could just show up and wipe them out. So sometimes it's not worth it. You may gain one, but you'll lose three if they get wiped out again. Just bear that in mind. Anyway, that's all there is to say, really, uh, when it comes to it. There's a lot of management situations. There's a lot of borders to secure. But if you take, a, a, but what's crucial here is that if you take Sylvania, you'll have two huge provinces with a lot of resources and a lot of money that will uh, support a lot of your uh, empire. Uh, with regards to Karakaren, just to mention this, they're quite likely to declare war on you in a campaign. Like I feel like the AI, uh, like the dwarven AI, should consider like, oh, we got the underway, right? And should consider like targets of opportunity with Andre, because really they should declare war on Scrag and take him out, because they absolutely can. But instead, they're more likely to declare war on you, because uh, they're not, because you actually share a land border with them. Uh, Scrag doesn't, but they could just use Underway to get to Scrag very, very easily. Just uh, some points worth ma mentioning there. But anyway, Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.